Hi, I'm Jake. And I'm Christine. And today we're going to be reacting to a review by No Antolar, aka The Spoony One. And this is another, yet again, Rev Brown review. I know he's done a lot of those and we react to a lot of those, but this is a little uh, different. This is um, the start of what I consider the Frank Stallone saga of the Spoonie experiment. It'll make sense uh, once we've seen the review. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. This is his February intro. <laughs> Look at those arms. It's back! The greatest and awesomest month of the year in which we celebrate the most badass action hero the world has ever known, Red Brown. And I thought I'd kick things off with a bang this year by reviewing Red's newest movie, Night Claws. That's right, I said newest movie, 2012! I couldn't even believe it. When I heard Red Brown was coming back for a new movie, I was like, ah! <laughs> I am so Twilight. jacked to see this movie. I can't wait. This right here, Red Brown versus Sasquatch. Now, that's what they should have just called what? this movie. This yep, Bigfoot it's so a Bigfoot movie. movie. By the, way. the man took out werewolves for crying out loud. Remember His that? sister was a werewolf, and he shot her in the chest with a fucking shotgun. Ah! <laughs> ah! We have wasted way too much time already, so Rip Brown versus Sasquatch, baby, let's do this! Oh man, this is gonna be so awesome, it's gonna be fucking badass! This is gonna be... It's gonna be the beginning to every single slasher movie ever made. Boobs. <laughs> I know you heard that. I know you did. <laughs> then go out there and check things out, or we're not finishing anything. Go check it out? The fuck you think he is? The Beastmaster? What the fuck's he gonna do to a bear? Here's a smarter idea. Why don't you drive a mile down the road, pull over, and fuck there? This is not a bad shit. idea. There's, there's no way they're actually opening a horror movie in 2012 like this. I don't know, I just thought the director has to be doing something clever, like having the actual characters of the movie watching a cheesy horror movie, and this is the scene in it, and then mm. laughing at how predictable it is. Oh, what's wrong? Why do they do that? You know what's sad? Even doing that is cliche. You can never have sex. Oh. Red Brown? Yep. Doesn't play by the rules. Got old. Oh, man, I 
Let himself go a little. What's going on? We're not. So what the hell happened here? We're not. Well, good morning to you too, Joe. I'm sorry, you're right. Good morning, Rupert. 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 Good morning, Rupert.
first rule of survival is to count on others in your party, not to kill each other. Really? That's the first rule? Don't kill each other? It makes sense. What's the second rule? Don't eat your own fingers? <laughs> yeah, and then there's this lady. Suck it up, both of you. Shake hands, and let's get this show on the road. Jesus Christ, this lady. Even for a movie about a killer, Yeti, her acting sucks. She's so stiff and weird. It's like she's in sixth grade trying to do a presentation on the Spanish-American War and trying the whole time not to look at her note cards because she spent all night trying to memorize it. Just look at her. Her asshole's clenched so tight he can bend steel. Pretty much, yes. As you know, we're going out into the wild for a period of three days. Free screenwriting tip. No member of the human race ever begins a sentence with, as you know, if they already know it, why are you telling them what they already know? First thing a person Good point. Needs to do when they find themselves in a survival type of situation is to get their bearings. Hey, wait, I thought the first thing was not to kill each other. Are you just making these rules up? Meanwhile, Sheriff Joe and the good doctor are looking for leads on Bigfoot. His hands are about to fall off. Yeah, their investigation <laughs> consists of walking around town and asking people if they know anything about Bigfoot. Did I hear you mention Bigfoot? Hey, if you're going to do it, might as well do it by the book. This case is as good as solved. Where might I find someone named? You know, I gotta say, I really don't have that much confidence in this supposed expert Sasquatch hunter. When plan A for finding Bigfoot is talking to a sweaty, hairy man named Cooter who smells like weak old anchovies. I got a bunch of photographs that nobody's ever seen before. Okay, when the greasy town drunk asks if you want to see his photographs that <laughs> nobody ever seen before, you say no! no. He got my dog, no. Not the gig, too, because you... I ain't never seen poor old Cooter again since that day. Your dog's name was Cooter? Well, what else would it be? Could we maybe, like, see What's your dog name? The Jasper. That's a good this dog a name. This creature we're talking about here. Show Wait, us what Cooter. happened. Don't tell. The first thing you want to do is he wanted to have sex with me. No, no, no flashbacks. I take it back. <laughs> Employed Sasquatch rape. Oh, great day for night shot, guys. Where the fuck yep. are they camping? It looks like they're in Mordor. Because somehow their campfire is blue and emits no light whatsoever. We're going to set up snares for game. What kind of game? Rabbit, chipmunk, squirrel. I don't think I can eat any of those. You hungry enough? You'll eat them. Ah, oh, this woman couldn't act wet in a thunderstorm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God. Terrified she was going to be the survivor chick using her skills to battle back against the Sasquatch. Oh, that's a relief. Hey, hang on. Why does this dickhead here have a gun? Why would he bring a fucking machete? Oh, and that's why they're going to have to a kill streak bonus here. I can't see shit, can you? <laughs> no. I was going to say, like, should we turn your brightness up? It's Bigfoot, man. You will straight it's at the max. Oh, God. Don't shoot me. Bad lighting. Oh, man. Guys, it's it's day for night. Yeah. I should play middle linebacker. You know, I hear the Ravens need a new guy. The guy and his wife somehow managed to survive the night, but instead the next morning get captured by a group of grizzled Bigfoot hunters. Who even four professional redneck Sasquatch now that looks like an old red brown. Still crazy and psychopathic. Yeah, I can see that. Which <laughs> mom is going to shoot some Poor hair Shut that. up. Well, we never get to do anything I want to do. They tie the couple to a tree to act as Bigfoot bait, and their badass leader just kind of wanders off for no reason. You see that creature kill him. What about them? Fuck you. Yeah. Leaving his <laughs> and tightening it like behind a guard. And he immediately falls for the most transparent seduction ploy imaginable. As if that wasn't stupid enough, he basically gift wraps the entire escape for the other guy by propping his shotgun against the tree he's tied to. <laughs> Even so, these guys are still one rung higher on the evolutionary ladder than those fucking dorks on finding Bigfoot. <laughs> Bigfoot hunter. And Sasquatch legend means science. And monster. How many fucking Bigfoot shows are there? A and lot. what? Kiss my ass. Anyway, Bigfoot kills this guy. And nothing of value was lost. <laughs> one phone call, and I get at the military rolling in here in a matter of hours, and this entire investigation would be out of your hands. Who the hell does she know? Professor. With a panic yeah. button to bring in the military because of Bigfoot. Okay, okay. You can come along, but don't get in the way. Dude, she is so bluffing. And even if 
Yeah, she's not. I gotta see her calling the Marines to hunt down fucking Bigfoot. Drunk driving, rednecks. <laughs> now that's what I'm talking about. Oh, come on. This town must be second on the list of most slasher movie victims per capita in the U.S. <laughs> just under Crystal Lake. Number two, never drink or do drugs. <laughs> Sheriff Joe's assembled a posse to go, I don't know, wander around the woods just hoping they run into Bigfoot, mainly to get systematically picked off. So he sets up a roadblock to keep Numbnut A and Numbnut B from certain easily foreseeable death. But both of you better promise to me that you're going to town tonight and you're going to stay there and don't BS me. Well, do we say, Sheriff? We'll do what you said. We promise. Okay, then. Why don't you just oh, tell BS them there's a eating bear running around the woods that's already killed at least two people? Cat! And where in the hell is Frank Stallone? There's another. Are you giving me the salad trick now, all of a sudden? <laughs> okay, so wait, Bigfoot ripped her head off and then put it back on her neck stump just to fuck with him? <laughs> or was he carrying a katana? <laughs> <laughs> I hope 
hope they all live. I hope they find Bigfoot, they circle around him and catch him in this deadly crossfire and just kill the fucker and go back to town to have Denny's afterwards. It'd be revolutionary. And a giant puppy Ah, there you are, Mr. Yes. Darwin. What took you so long? <clears throat> it is no monster. <clears throat> Strike commando. Let him go. Not a chance, bitch. <laughs> yes, thank you. Finally. This is what it's all about. You can shoot again. It's what we've all been waiting for, so I hope you have prepared yourselves for the most epic monster battle in the history of cinema. Because Rev's just taken up the hunter, he's got access to the dude's entire arsenal of weaponry, pistols, rifles, booby traps. He's fully loaded, and it is on. It's Rep Brown versus Sasquatch, mono of Bigfoot, and it's about fucking time, too, because this movie has been about 70 minutes of the most boring, predictable shit I have. <gasps> she just killed Reb. No one kills Reb. I think you can see his soul die. Yeah. Wasn't expecting that one, were you, Spoonie? Is this real? Part one. I gotta say. In part two, trust me, he goes into this. that like came to the third one like one yeah. of those cartoons where they're hiding behind a tree mm -hmm. you should be able to be seen but you're not yeah like this and yeah. <laughs> so so far how does night claws look to you terribly predictable and spoony disgust until they killed the room yeah now I want to know why now I'm slightly <laughs> interested in this movie <laughs> yeah. And trust me, he explains it in part two. And all I gotta say about part one is great review, really shows how just what a cli overly hundred per cliche mess this movie is. Mm -hmm. Like every horror cliche you can imagine. And it almost feels like a sci fi channel movie. Yes. It but does not look like anything that should have ever been in theaters. Yeah, but with a few fucks thrown in there. And Reb. Definitely not his best comeback movie. No. And, yeah, as you point out, um, he looks really old and a little tired, to be honest. Tired, just over it. And also, Burnt out. I noticed something, and you may disagree with me, but while he's not as badass in this movie as he was years ago, I think his acting's improved a little. Like, his line delivery sounds a little more natural. I would actually agree with that. But you know what? I still I prefer badass over a good line delivery oh, for yeah. him. And Quintessential red brown. A couple similarities to Jaws. That was interesting. Yeah, it was cool how he um, compiled this. And you remember how he kept going, where's Frank Stallone? Mm -hmm. Well, that's also going to be answered in part two. So Can't wait. Without further ado, let's get into it. Let's get into part two. Do you part two? Uh -huh. 
Same intro. Like, See, he's, he's not naked. And he was Captain America once. Oh, really? Rev is the first guy to play Captain America in a live action movie, I believe. Ooh. Or one that mattered. I guess it upset him so much he had to change his image. Yeah, you can possibly give a shit. They killed Red Brown, man. The movie's fucking over. I don't even know what the point is. How can you stay invested in a movie when they just kill off the world's greatest action movie hero like a bitch? <laughs> Betrayal! This movie is bullshit! This is not how you treat action movie royalty! We were wrong! This is almost fucking treasonous! We were promised fucking a. Red Brown versus Sasquatch. You know what? He never even sees the fucking Sasquatch. He's supposed to be the hero of this movie, right? Well, he doesn't get to fucking yell or scream or kill anybody or anything. This is like if you were watching Bullshit. Star Wars and the fucking shark, and all of a sudden Richard Dreyfuss just gets behind Roy Scheider and just fucking breaks his neck. Hey, where the fuck does this come from? It goes from being the most predictable formula monster movie I've seen since I was a kid, and then all of a sudden there's a bitch of it. Then that Shyamalan's head just explodes. You said it. What a twist, you know? See what I mean? I'm sorry, <laughs> really trying to have fun. Aww. I can't do it. <laughs> Need a hug. Need a pun. Sasquatch. Ooh, Sasquatch. What? Who is this bitch? What, is she secretly working with Bigfoot or what? The only thing I can think of that could possibly explain her behavior is, I don't know, maybe she wants Bigfoot to run wild and free and she doesn't want the cops to kill it, or maybe she wants to capture it to use in some secret mad science experiment, or uh, to sell to some evil corporation to use as a weapon. Well, I don't know. I mean, come on, the Umbrella Corporation's done weirder stuff than that. That's not real. But no, that's not it at all. It's, it's not even close, really, because she's not even interested in Bigfoot. She's after this guy. What beast? Yeah, the creepy old Bigfoot hunter guy. And it's not like I was covering up his involvement in the movie or anything. He's just some guy with two other guys, and they're out hunting Bigfoot. That's it. The only thing he really does in this movie is capture these two and ties them up to use his Bigfoot bait. Which works, I guess. But then he proceeds to run within punching distance of the Sasquatch instead of... I don't know, climbing a tree with a rifle like a real hunter might do. And oh yeah, it also turns out that unloading a handgun into a nine-foot-tall gorilla that he's seen can casually rip a human being's head off like a marshmallow pea probably <laughs> should have brought something with a little more stopping power. Or a fucking elephant gun. And why in the hell does he attack the sheriff? He reps a big guy, but he don't look like Bigfoot. And it's not like the sheriff knows anything about what he's done up to now. At this point, you think he plead for help instead of trying to stab the only guy around here who still has a gun. And if he has a knife, why didn't he just stab him right away with it instead of decking him? Apparently, you have some training. Seriously, he's just a generic antagonist. Just a shallow, one trait character like everyone else in this movie. But the big secret is that she's not after Bigfoot. She wants him. So much so that she's like some fucking assassin that leaves no witnesses because she stabs this dude in the fucking throat Kill her and assistant. snaps Rev's back like Steven Seagal. I mean, Jesus, where did this come from? I thought she was an anthropologist. I kind of liked him. I'm Professor Why'd you kill him? from the National Museum of Anthropology. Wait, hang on, what is that? Is that a get-out-of-jail-free card? <laughs> it's not worth it. I have to believe You're this kidding. is the director trying to be clever, like this is an Easter egg instead of it actually happening, because I mean... No way. That's no funny. way would both of them be this lame. Either way, just... What? Sasquatch. No joke, she's supposed to be a bounty hunter. It would appear that way, yes. They could go on for hours about how this doesn't make any fucking sense. So, you know, I will. <laughs> okay, she's a doctor of anthropology at the National Museum of Anthropology, which just so happens to be located within driving distance of the location of a series of Bigfoot murders. It's a small town called Morningside. It's a couple hours drive north. And she just so happens to be a frequent investigator of Sasquatch-related phenomena. But this will be the first time we get to be there just after it happened. Cool. So if she and this guy have done this several times, it implies that she's been working at the museum for months, at minimum, most likely years. And you have to figure the National Museum of Anthropology <clears throat> wouldn't hire just anybody. Where might I find someone named Cooter? It's not like you can fake a doctor in anthropology and still work for years in a museum without somebody catching yeah. up. 
So tack on about five, six years for the education and doctoral thesis. And the professor was just soft, soft hands, soft hands. I, I Creepy. <laughs> So, I don't know, what, she planned this out for the better part of a decade, like the fucking Batman? Who made videos on PCP? What is she, the Countess of Monte fucking Cristo? Well, she can't have planned it since the only reason she went down there was because the cops called her to investigate Bigfoot. But the cops never mentioned Bigfoot, did they? They all thought it was some psycho killer or wild animal. Yeah, but what kind of animal does that to their prey and then doesn't eat it? Oh, what kind of think of? The human kind. Bingo. You are made of... So I guess it's a really lucky thing the cops decided to call in the first place, otherwise she'd have never caught this guy. She'd never left the fucking room. And they just so happened to call this museum instead of anywhere else, like the local university or even the high school nearby. And the call just so happened to reach her office instead of the dozens of other anthropologists who also work at the museum. And she just so happens to infer it was a Sasquatch attack, despite the much more likely cause being a grizzly bear, but can Sasquatches just so happen to be something she's fanatical about researching, which gives her the perfect excuse to visit the town undercover to get the guy by accompanying the cops who are planning to investigate the forest for Bigfoot, which she knows the guy is also doing because he just so happens to be a Sasquatch hunter too. That's not real. And it's a good thing that Sheriff Joe's a fucking idiot who immediately buys into the theory that the murders were caused by fucking Bigfoot. Right, Doc? And she's lucky that she doesn't like cash and plans that are get out of jail mm. business card. And she's lucky that Bigfoot just so happened to slaughter all the other cops, but not her, so there aren't any witnesses. But no, she also has to kill her assistant, which mm. raises the question of why she even bothered to bring the guy in the first place, yeah. when leaving him behind would have simplified things infinitely. <laughs> now she has to go back to the university and explain the reason she came back alone was that he got torn apart by a fucking Yeti. Which actually might have been a pretty funny scene, but she could have saved herself a lot of trouble just by saying this. Hey, I've got to go for a few days to some bump butt pumpkin don't mode up to investigate some bear scrote here or something. If you help me out and stay here and break these papers. Cool. There, done. Jesus Christ. There's just no way this was all part of the plan. So the only explanation is that this is the biggest coincidence to ever occur in the entire span of history in the fucking universe. <laughs> He loves that clip. Was it worth fucking Captain America right in the ass instead of just hmm. having some cool action scenes like a gunfight with the hunter guy or some badass final showdown with Sasquatch like the end of fucking Predator? You've got Rep Brown. How do you fuck this up? They found a way. Oh, you had to have a twist ending. So, okay, I'll play with your little anti-climax. Who the hell hired Ben Mofet? You guessed it. Frank Stallone. Is that him? Very good. I have your money transferred to you immediately. Where the trubby fuck have you been, Frank? This guy just walks into the movie with like five minutes to go, completely out of nowhere. We have no idea who this character is, no idea where he comes from. We're still reeling from this whole bounty hunter thing punching us right in the sack. But here's Frank, finally. He plays the guy with the money who wants the other guy. I have a helicopter on the top of the hill and will take you anywhere you want to go. Wow, cool. It must be one of those stealth helicopters you can't hear that can land in the middle of a dense forest. But why, Frank? Why did Red Brown have to die, man? Why? I guess you're wondering who I am and what I want. Yes. What's a paladin? You ran a special black ops operation in Nicaragua years ago. Code name Red Viper. Remember a young captain on your team named Michael Dent? No, I don't know. Well, you should. Because you killed him for disobeying an order to murder a mother and child. Did Frank Stallone just hijack this movie? That captain Seems like his son. His son. And I've been looking for you a long time. And now that I've found you, I'm straight you out. You know, I gotta admit, it's pretty ballsy not to have Bigfoot involved in the climax of your Bigfoot movie. Scary. In any way. Well. It's like Frank just walked on set and started saying lines from a completely different movie and everyone was just too polite to tell him, so they're like, uh, fuck it, we've only got Frank on set for like four hours, so, uh, just ride around it. Fuck. Ah! And that's it. I don't fucking believe it. And seriously, Frank just shows up and the movie becomes Reservoir Dogs for like two minutes and then he leaves and, uh, what the fuck are we doing again? Oh, right, Bigfoot, um... Yeah, they kill her and she dies. Credits. This is the worst Red Brown movie ever! What kind of movie just kills off Red Brown like he was nothing and then replaces? Uh. What happened? Man, my time.
probably may not be perfect, but uh, I don't think he was being entirely fair. <laughs> That's a reference to his very first review video ever, where he played this video game called The Adventures of Bayou Billy. <laughs> <laughs> It really is like a bad sci-fi movie. I think even the sci-fi channel would be like, we're not playing this shit. Yeah, what did it come out on? I think, well, obviously on DVD. Yeah. I think it must have been a straight-to-video movie. All I know now is that uh, the whole thing is available on YouTube to watch for free. Oh shit, it's that bad? <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> I really think that's the only way, maybe they have ad revenue, or maybe someone put it up and the company just doesn't give a damn. <laughs> Probably get more from the ad revenue. Hello, naked teen couple. Okay. We missed you. I guess Spoonie just wanted to play the actual films and credits. Hmm. Or maybe this is his version of that films yeah. and credits. Probably. Probably better than what the movie mm -hmm. probably is. Kip. She looks like a Roxy. Yeah. Hopefully, he returns someday. Spoonie. Damn, Sheriff. Why you gotta go spool all our fun? You come by in the morning, I'll get him back to you, no fine. Now look, I want you guys to go out, get yourself a beer, or whatever. <laughs> and that is the Night Claws review, parts one and two. Did you like the review part of it? Oh, the review was fantastic. Nice job, Spoonie. No, and, and Twilight. The whole movie, we think we've already made clear what we think. It looks dreadful. Terrible. It's like... It's a good, very bad day. It looks like The Expendables 3 of horror yeah. movies. <laughs> just takes in like a legendary action star and just fucks up using him completely. And, yeah, what did you think of... I loved how the part two um, explained everything. Mm -hmm. It's like an all analyzation of the ending. Yeah. What did you think of the twist, uh, as the supposed twist, as they call it? So terribly lame. And, like, where did that come from? And I yeah. liked his thing of being like, oh, it came in a completely random movie. Yeah, and he's right. It makes no sense. No sense. Yeah. No lead-in, no... Yeah, shadowing, especially no. about how she's a she works at the university yet she's a, a bounty hunter. Yeah, and Frank Stallone, there he is, and uh, yeah, it's like completely different movie. And I want to say, except even M Night Shyamalan, the king of dumb twists, would look at this ending and be like, bullshit. Yeah. The ending to the village wasn't that stupid. <laughs> no, that was pretty bad. And um, this, as I said, was the beginning of what I call the Frank Stallone saga. Because if you think this is the last time he talked about Frank Stallone, you'd be crazy. Mm -hmm. And eventually, Noah did end up reviewing an action movie that starred Frank Stallone. And I'm hoping at some point later this year, we can continue watching the other Frank Stallone-related videos. Because trust me, it is a fucking saga. <laughs> I don't know what Reb's up to these days. I think he has one movie in the works. I don't know if it's been released yet. But for the most part... I swear I see him in Hallmark movies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's on his resume. But um, yeah, this was his first movie in like 15 years. 
he had pretty much been retired and I don't know, maybe the director was the son or daughter of one of his best friends. Mm -hmm. I don't know why he came out for this. Yeah. Terrible. Maybe just needed some quick cash. Yeah. And you know at the end, Spoonie goes, this is the worst ever? Well, I, th I think his opinions change because he's, he's done reviewing Red Brown movies. Um, a few years ago, he did what he said was the last one. Like, there was no movies left. Like, he was just out of them. Yeah. And the very last one he chose to do, he went on record saying, this is the worst. Mm -hmm. Like, Night Claws is bad, but the final Red Brown review, the firing line, that is just, that's a piece of shit on a ten times bigger level scale. You need to see it to believe it. And, uh... Yeah, I love this review a lot, and when I first started showing Spoonie to Guy, like, Guy really, he didn't get into Spoonie at first. Yeah. But I showed a, a few more reviews, and it was around this review that he finally started to get into him. Mm -hmm. No, this is a great review. Good two-parter. Yeah. And, uh... I like how he broke it up. Once again, I don't know if he ever will, but hope to see him again, hopefully someday. And, uh... Thanks for joining me once again on my second channel, and we will see you later.